My name is Phil Redman. I'm our offering manager here at OneTrust for ESG. OneTrust has been around for about five years. We have a cloud-based software platform that allows companies to simplify and reduce complexity of enterprise programs, things like privacy, ethics, whether they're third-party risk management, or even now ESG. You know, ESG has been around for some time, and it has very complex requirements and needs. Today, we're going to talk about corporate accountability, how to build a successful ESG program, not just reporting program, but a program that you can use to create all the solutions you need for your ESG requirements. Now, those vary by company, by industry, by region. So there isn't one right way that this is being done. However, it's really important that there are certain components that you should think about. And we'll talk about kind of what the needs are today for around ESG, about different reporting programs, and around different solutions and capabilities uh, that provide a full end-to-end -end solution for you and what you're doing with your ESG program. Look forward to any questions that you may have. First, if we think about all the different trends within ESG, there's no doubt that within the last 12 months, we've seen an increase in interest in ESG, driven not just by the financial services environment and by asset management, although of course they're an important driver in bringing attention to ESG requirements, but around you know, the challenges that we're still seeing around climate change, around social justice, around diversity and equity and inclusion. And so there's no doubt that over the past 12, 18 months, there's been an increased interest by companies of all sizes and in all locations around ESG reporting and ESG programs. Um, now, many companies that have come to us are concerned around the time it takes, the amount of resources that's needed, and the experience that they have around starting an ESG program. Today, there aren't a lot of mature tools that are available to help companies really create and drive a successful ESG program internally, as well as externally with their suppliers and their partners. And so we'll talk a little bit about today about some of those requirements that we see and some of the trends that are really driving companies to support a new era of trust and transparency. You know, trust is a certain important part of what companies are looking for to support within ESG around the reporting and being transparent is a really big way of engaging trust. And OneTrust is really the only company out there supporting what we're calling a trust fabric across many different elements within the enterprise, whether it's around how you serve cookies to your customers, whether it's around how you run privacy programs internally and how you're managing and protecting important personal information and personal data of your customers and your employees and your partners, or whether it comes to running ethics programs internally and giving employees the opportunity to give feedback and to provide insight into things that are happening within the, the company. And of course, you know, with the transparency around ESG reporting. So we definitely see companies of all sizes, in all locations, wanting to step up what they're doing in ESG, but many of them don't know where to get started. Today's market drivers really are a multitude of things, whether it's around shareholders and the board that are driving kind of additional requirements for ESG, whether it's around ESG risk factors that investors are concerned about, whether it's around global sustainable investments, et cetera. And we also know that there's new regulation and more regulation that's coming around ESG, whether in the United States we'll see uh, future requirements from uh, the SEC about ESG reporting. Um, they created a task force this year to cut down on greenwashing. We know in, in Europe and in, and, and in the European region, there's quite a few uh, requirements, whether it's SFDR or CDDA um, and many others that are really driving uh, new new reasons for companies to support both internal and external ESG reporting and programs. And we're seeing a real huge growth in ESG assets and, and the number of ESG regulations that are emerging worldwide. And we think that this will continue as uh, we're seeing a, a very big UN conference this year, uh, what's called COP26, where, uh, where, where agents from all around the world will come together and look at the next generation of uh, climate change and regulations around that, building on top of the Paris agreements from a number of years ago. Uh, and so there's an increased urgency, not just around the asset markets and investments, but an increased urgency around uh, employees who want to understand better around what their companies are doing in this space, around customers and want to make sure that they're buying and contributing to companies that are 
um, doing good in the environment and doing good for their employees and doing 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 well in social justice. And all these things are really becoming more important and are driving companies um, to go and report more around their ESG uh, areas and metrics. We've seen that companies are also accelerating what they're doing when it comes to things like climate change. Um, companies have set net zero targets and are increasingly doing those not at 2050, but over a third of global 500 companies have made public commitments that they are or they will be carbon neutral, meeting RE100 or science-based targets, or even net zero and net negative by 2030. And so we're seeing increasing number of companies that are moving up their responses to climate change and by uh, committing and, and, and being the lead in this space. And so it's really important um, you know, with many companies need to baseline where they are today before they can make these commitments to understand what their timing will be. And that's where a lot of your ESG programs will come into place. You know, for those who are new to ESG, right, ESG uh, reporting provides quantitative metrics around sustainability, corporate social responsibility, and your governance efforts. And so there are many different metrics that companies can report on in different frameworks. I'll talk about those in a second. Right? Uh, of course, in, in environmental and sustainability, there's no doubt that greenhouse gas emissions is, is kind of the number one metric that many organizations want to report on and that helps them understand where they are when baselining their goals towards uh, being carbon neutral. Um, but there's other areas, including uh, water consumption and water stress areas. That's also very important. Waste management, something that everybody can be a part of. And of course, even though the focus is quite a bit typically on environmental and sustainability metrics, there's no doubt that the social metrics around diversity and inclusion, justice, pay quality, gender equality, all these things are also really important, as well as even governance when we think about, you know, the quality of government, stakeholder engagement, policies that are, are governing the uh, actions and the codes of, of an enterprise. And so all these things go into kind of an ESG report and an ESG program. Many organizations are using uh, metrics frameworks in order to decide on, you know, which to report. Some of these are annual, some are moving more towards more frequent reporting. Some of the more common ones are here, whether it's the GRI standard, which is a very broad framework that can be used across uh, environmental, social and governance. CDP uh, also does uh, cover social and governance, but has a bigger focus on the climate. TCFD, which is being adopted in the UK as a standard framework over the next couple of years is also one that many organizations are looking at to talk about more specifically their climate re related disclosures. And then of course, um, one that's very well known is the uh, Not From the Value Reporting Foundation, formerly SASB with their SASB standards, which are very industry specific. And so they're very targeted on your specific industry as well as their International Integrated Reporting Framework or IIRF, um, which is a, a newer one that's been updated from 2013 this year uh, to cover more uh, integrated international frameworks uh, with a focus on capital markets. And so whatever one you're going to choose, right, and there are many more, there are many industry ones and there are other broader ones that are available, um, it's really important to understand that this is just the first step in your ESG program. So reporting um, is not the end goal. It's, a, it's one of the links in the value chain, which I'll talk about in a minute, um, but reporting shouldn't be your goal. You know, taking advantage of the data and the information that's in there to create your ESG strategy which should also be driven towards obviously improving social equality at your organization or your community, as well as reducing you know, your carbon footprint is really more of the goal that you wanna to get to. It's not just about producing one of these reports. And as I mentioned, so we see there's this whole ESG value chain that is uh, really important for you to think about and whether that's anything around strategy and development to create you know, what you're going to be doing, create your policies, to create your strategy around your reporting and your program for ESG. Um, and then, of course, you know, gathering information, having a central repository to look at that information, to review that information and see dashboards, to track your goals and your targets. And then remediation and whether that's, you know, for, first of all, focused on reduction of your carbon footprint or remediating that through carbon offsets and marketplaces. Right? Where you're going to be looking at is your, your whole value chain for ESG and understand kind of what your strategy would be from end to end. And so when we think about that at OneTrust, we offer what we call ESG program management. And so this is your fundamental core capability. Again, part of our platform, right, an integrated platform, which helps you prioritize your ESG initiatives. And so whether that's carbon reduction, whether that's water and waste, 
whether that's consumer rights, responsible sourcing, diversity, procurement, all those different things that you would look at you know, as part of your ESG program capabilities, this tool allows you to collect and centralize the data, whether automated data through your enterprise apps or through utility automation or through data stores, you can upload data. So we have a dozen different ways that you can pull in data. Of course, you can manually enter data, you can create assessments and surveys, you can have web forms, but the idea is to pull in data both from external sources as well as your internal sources and to have as much of that automated as possible. Then analyze your data. So where is your current state? How do you compare across same size companies or same industries? Can you identify your risks, your gaps? You know, can you set targets and track those targets? And then of course, move on your way towards taking action, whether that's reduction, remediation, offsets, um, changes, updates to policies, whatever those may be. And so, you know, we have different capabilities and technologies to support you all along your program management needs. So keys to success for you around this. One is you need to make sure that you're automating as much data collection as possible. Or you want to get to 80, 90 percent of that uh, automated versus manual. Today, a lot of organizations are using spreadsheets or email or other ways of manually collecting that data. Right? We want to provide you more of an automated system. Next, you want to make sure that this data is centralized. ESG data comes from lots of different sources, but you're going to need to centralize this data and the ability to track that over time and store that data so that way you can review that from year to year. It's going to be really important. So rather than kind of trying to access it and view it from those sources, bring it all into a single source. Benchmarking, benchmarking and setting targets and goals are going to be critical for you to track your success on your programs, right? And we'll, give, we'll use AI to help you with projections and optimizations to see, you know, are you on target, are you ahead, or are you behind? So allowing you to track progress, which helps you maybe change some of your strategy and change some of the things that you're doing in order to either accelerate your programs or to improve your programs and make those changes. And then of course, being able to report either for internal reports or external reports, customize, you know, your assessments to, to drive and pull that information in and output reports in any style that you want. So lots of different opportunities to support what you're doing in ESG today. I want to thank you very much for the time for watching this and please uh, I'd love to hear any questions thoughts or comments that you have when it comes to uh, ESG and how we can help you out here at OneTrust. Thank you very much.